Hi, my name is Kevin Stambridge. I'm the Deputy City and County Manager for the City and County of Broomfield. I want to thank you all for coming out this evening. Um, I'd also like to introduce with us this evening is Councilmember David Beacom. And we have a whole bunch of staff here. And I think you all probably know some of them or all of them. But with the staff kind of raise their hands, we've got a number of our department heads, uh, some of our division managers, so mostly in back. We have questions, and we have questions for the senior services, for the uh, rec programs, for the aquatic programs. Uh, a lot of folks here, and we're here to help answer your questions. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about design for a replacement community center. Um, it's clear walking around this evening, a lot of you have some very strong ideas on what we ought to be doing as we look at this reconstructed facility. And so it's fun to see our woodworking friends and our swimmers and a whole host of others. And the discussion we're gonna have is, okay, we have a, a budget and we have a site, a physical site, and how do we put it all together and how do we satisfy all the needs of the community or those needs we can as we move forward. Um, I'd like to just take a moment and talk about how we got here. Um, a couple of years ago, the, the City Council, working with the Capital Improvement staff and other staff, were looking at how do we remodel this facility. And Ben Nance, who's going to talk in just a moment, had looked at, well, how do we get the elevator where it works? How do we expand the kitchen? How do we make sure we maintain the views of Bruner Reservoir? And it became very apparent that we need to start over. And the City Council said, we agree. Our finance director was able to present a financing plan to the city council where about a month ago we issued bonds and the approximate amount we came back with proceeds of about 85 million dollars 85.3 million dollars to reconstruct the community center and to finish the construction of Dillon Road and it's roughly 40 million for the community center and 40 million for Dillon Road um, I'll tell you that um, when we put the bonds out and the city council is very deliberate it's with um, not apprehension but great caution that the City Council said it's okay to issue debt on this one because those who've been around Broomfield for a long time know the City Council worked really hard at bringing down our debt. In this case they said let's do it because we really need to deal with Community Center and Dillon Road. We issued the bonds and the interest rate on those bonds is about 3.05 percent which is really extraordinary and allows us to have the conversation we're having now about what are the facilities going to look like and how do we do it. So um, that's kind of our story. Uh, I'm going to ask Ben Nance from our CIP department, he's a project manager, to talk just a moment about where we are in the process. Uh, so again, I, this is very early, so you know you all looking at plans and saying, oh my gosh, it's not big enough, it's too small. Now's the time to raise those concerns and, and have that discussion because we're, we're very early in, in the design process. So Ben, would you kind of share where we are? Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so that up a little bit better. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. This is a very important event um, to get your further input. Uh, as most of you know, we've already gone through a lot of online process of getting community input. We were at Broomfield Days. We also have stakeholder committees that represent um, PRAC and HSAC and also the Senior Resource Board that have been giving us great input. And We've gone through a couple iterations now of conceptual designs that have actually are starting to get dialed in a little bit. Um, so, and we're receiving a lot of great comments in regards to what we're seeing. Um, you've seen a couple options that are in the back, which is going to be the next round. That round will also be posted tomorrow on the website, so you can look at it on the website and make your comments as well from there. Um, other things that are in the background is we put an RFQ out for qualifications for the general contractor for the job. With a project like this, we're looking at a fast track process because we need to complete the project within three years um, to the best of our ability. And that means that we need to keep things moving in a manner where we can get it completed. Um, right now we're in the conceptual design phase. We'll move into a um, schematic design phase from December through about February. And during that process, we'll be hiring the contractor as well. That contractor will help put numbers and, and uh, cost estimates with what we have and start dialing in the project so that we can um, make sure we're meeting the budget. Right now, we're having a lot of, you know, this is what we want, this is how big we want it, and 
those things really are might be wish list items in some cases because we have a budget that we need to maintain. So that's where we are at current moment. And to speak a little bit towards construction, we're targeting summer to start the um, replace or uh, getting the senior center standalone. So that means that we got to replace some of the utilities to the building and make sure it's um, up and running. And then we can demolish, demolish the um, recreational wing. Um, to create the space for it in the fall of 2018 to build the new center. And that center will start then and probably be a 24 month construction process. Um, once that, that would put us at the, let's see, 2020, uh, so end of summer 2020. And then we'd have a last phase where we would take care of whatever's left in the site and after we've moved into the new building. So that's what it looks like. Um, in the upcoming years. So I'm going to turn this over to Brian Erickson with Davis Partnership. Thanks, Ben. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here tonight to talk to you about what is, I think, a really important project for your community, a new community center. And um, I've got a little bit of a presentation to give that uh, tells a little bit more in detail about where we are, how we got here so far. But the second half of this meeting is really hearing back from you. And so um, I hope you can uh, uh, give me just a little bit of time to get through the presentation and we'll uh, just get going with it. Some of the things I'm gonna cover here uh, include just a little bit of a project introduction, although Kevin and Ben did a, a fine job, so I think I can uh, curtail that a little bit. Um, I want to go over the community input that we've received so far, uh, give you an idea of the program overview that has come from a lot of that input, and uh, talk about site constraints, conceptual options, and then open it up for questions and answers. So with project introduction, um, uh, a lot of this is what uh, is uh, saying again what Kevin and Ben said. Um, the addition and renovation of uh, this facility was abandoned. Um, a replacement re facility on this site is, uh, is what is currently uh, in process. Um, and one of the stipulations is that the senior center does need to stay operational through construction. And so that's a little bit of a site challenge that uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, our construction budget is about uh, 34.2 million, that's with contingencies. Um, and that, we, we figure that that buys us about 87,500 square feet. Um, and scheduled occupancy is um, uh, August of 2020. A little bit about the schedule. Uh, we are where the red line is right now. So we're uh, closing in on the end of conceptual design and we thought this was a great time to get the community in and update you and, um, and show you what we're up to and get your final input, not final input, but get input for conceptual design. Um, from there we go into uh, uh, a couple of other phases of more refined design and then documentation and that takes us into that fast track process of construction that Ben Nance was talking about. Um, and that, uh, that all begins in around uh, April or May, um, depending on uh, how things go. And uh, we are, as I said earlier, uh, targeting August of 2020 for completion. One of the things that we always like to do at the beginning of a project is understand what's going to determine uh, if this project is successful. And so there's a, a number of things that the steering committee put their heads together and, and came up with, and I'd just like to share those with you. Um, one is that the facility would be sized to meet current and near future needs, uh, be better organized in terms of functions and spaces, um, and I think along with that goes some flexibility with the use of those spaces, uh, that the exterior image fits within the civic campus, and that the number of users is increased and that the facility is sustainable and operationally efficient. And finally, and last but not least, a multi-generational multi facility is realized. So the community input, which um, 
Uh, as Ben said, this came from a number of different sources that we've been through and, uh, uh, and, and uh, made record of. Uh, so there's online and, and social media input. Um, a lot of uh, good comments and discussions from Broomfield days and a number of focus groups that uh, were formally convened and met uh, targeting specific elements of the program. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through um, these comments and I'm uh, mercifully I'm not going to read all of these to you but I'm going to try to just summarize and 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 comments like these bullets that are up here are actually a distillation of the hundreds of comments that we got but what we picked out is are, are the the most prevalent the most common uh, the most numerous comments uh, for all these things so in terms of the exterior and site conditions just want to make a facility and a site that's accessible to all. Uh, we want to uh, uh, encourage uh, the, the use of this facility by seniors and therefore make it easier with drop-offs and including a bus drop-off. Uh, we also want to um, uh, keep some of the features of, of this current facility that are really good and that is, you know, the, the walkways along Bruner Reservoir, the, um, uh, and, and just uh, making sure that we provide a facility that uh, the entry is protected, shaded, and, um, and you know, easy to navigate. In terms of the entry and lobby and front desk, uh, the, the request has been for a generous um, uh, entry. Um, I think some of you who are familiar with the Paul Durda uh, facility, that entry is maybe a little too narrow and uh, so we're going to be uh, thinking about that as we uh, design the entry here and making it wider and broader, making it uh, easy for uh, all generational users to, to get in and out. Um, a little bit of uh, concerns about the front desk um, and, and whether it's consolidated front desk for rec and senior services. Um, and I think that we're leaning towards the consolidated desk, uh, one that also has uh, the support of an administration area nearby or backing up next to it. Lakeshore room um, and uh, just some general comments uh, about meeting rooms, just an emphasis on a community center and that means plenty of uh, space in a room like Lakeshore Room to accommodate up to 200 people, a uh, place for uh, meetings and classes and, um, and just making it a, co a community center. Um, those things are important. And as I mentioned earlier, the flexibility of spaces is really important. Um, the Lakeshore Room itself, what we wanna do is we wanna uh, maintain views out to the Bruner Reservoir. That, uh, and I think we all wanna keep it named the Lakeshore Room. We also uh, want to improve uh, upon what you have here by virtue of size, accommodating up to 200 people uh, for events. Uh, also making sure that we can accommodate up to 60 seniors in a yoga class. Um, and uh, in addition, improving acoustics, and that includes acoustical separation through these um, uh, operable partitions. Senior services, um, some of the comments that uh, I just want to make sure that you know that we heard is, is that uh, some people were concerned that maybe the seniors would be overlooked in this process and I, uh, I, I really hope that that is not the case and I think that um, the community center staff, especially Erica and her staff, have been uh, very, very supportive of uh, making sure that we're designing for seniors and we know that it's a, a strong community here and, um, and so we want to make sure that that is, um, is well taken care of. Um, we also want to accommodate the range of seniors and that includes the younger more active seniors and making sure that they have space and activities and feel welcome here too. Um, and um, uh, also just a separate senior lounge, maybe one that is not out in the open in circulation but one that has a, a, a specific room to it. It might be seniors only. 
Um, in short, what we want to do, what we hope to achieve, is making this a state-of-the-art facility for seniors. Wood shop and art and ceramics. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, feelings about uh, the wood shop, and, uh, and, and, and rightfully so. The, um, uh, the need there is for increased safety, uh, some increase in, um, in woodworking machines, and the ability to accommodate more users. Um, so they're working in a very small space right now. Uh, storage seems to be a really big issue, and there's some uh, outboard temporary uh, storage buildings that house a heck of a lot of wood out there that they get for free, uh, which is also a, a great deal. Um, but um, uh, what we want to do is uh, make sure that the wood shop is, is functional and safe, we want to make sure that it's located in a place that it's not interfering with other uh, activities. And, um, and then just to say something about art and ceramics, um, perhaps a, a, a larger art room uh, or uh, think about a separate ceramics room plus the art room. Fitness and recreational programs. Um, there is a, a large amount of pickleball players in this community, which is great. Um, it's a, that's, that's a, it's a fun thing. And uh, I think what you're gonna see is that we're gonna be accommodating uh, space for uh, probably up to six courts. Um, and right now they, they will not be permanent, but uh, that's, that's just where we are at this point. Um, Weight and fitness areas uh, increasing in size, including uh, rooms for group fitness classes. Um, more yoga space included with that. Um, we've gotten positive feedback on a walk-run track, and so uh, a lot of the options that we've been looking at have been uh, trying to work that in. You'll see a little bit of that later. Um, some space for functional and personal training, which is, uh, seems to be a little bit of a trend. Um, and um, that's, uh, that's about it for that one. Um, oh, the gymnasium. Um, I think we just covered that. Um, pools and natatorium. Um, we've gotten a lot of conflicting comments about the nature of what the pools here should be. Everything from just hardcore competitive swimming to more leisure um, pools. And um, considering that there's uh, a, a pretty good leisure pool at Paul Durda, as well as the bay, which is right across the way there for leisure swimming, we thought that the, the um, focus really should be on uh, more competitive swimming um, things that, that uh, may not necessarily be uh, uh, kid-oriented, if you will, um, but more um, competitive, recreational, and health-related swimming. So we'll, uh, we'll dive into what that means in a little bit. Um, and uh, so I think what, your, what, what our vision is at this point is that we're not going to be having uh, slide uh, slides into the pool or uh, 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 lazy river type things. It's going to be uh, pretty simple, straightforward, and functional bodies of water. Locker rooms. There's no question that the locker rooms need to be updated. They are too small. Uh, the the showers do not meet uh, current health code, um, and. Um, there's been a request, uh, which makes sense, for some day lockers. General comments. Um, uh, there's been concerns about what the disruption would be um, in and around this site, and especially with the senior center remaining in place during construction. Just uh, what this disruption would mean. And um, I, I hope in the Q&A we might be able to address that a little bit. Um, the other concern was uh, over fees and whether or not with a new facility would, would fees for rentals and, um, and use of, of the facility be a little out of range. And so I think that uh, uh, just voicing that we've, we've heard those concerns. 
um, also have a number of desires for the space that the facilities support and foster a sense of community, which is, after all, what this facility is about. Um, also to uh, uh, maybe provide some public restrooms to non-recreational users and events that might be uh, accessed directly from outside, and that could come in handy in, in certain uh, instances. Um, uh, another big one, a couple of big ones are uh, uh, consider using two or having two elevators instead of one. Um, and of course, uh, the, uh, the gravity of the need for storage is, is very apparent, and so we're going to be working storage in. A little bit about the program overview. Uh, in the big picture of things, your current facility is about 37,343 <coughs> square feet. That's uh, symbolized by this um, uh, blue square here. And what we're proposing is a facility of about 87,500 square feet. And so uh, for those of you who uh, square footage doesn't mean anything, um, those squares are proportional um, and in scale with one another. So uh, it's a substantial increase of over 200%. Um, I want to talk a little bit about each individual program element and how we're thinking about these uh, so that you understand the program from a graphic standpoint as well as a square footage standpoint. Um, in this next series of, of graphics, what you're going to see is existing facility elements on the, on the left and proposed uh, program uh, of those uh, equivalent facilities on the right. So with the pool, what we have is, um, is a substantially larger natatorium by a factor of about three than what you have right now. Um, it will consist of, uh, right now we're thinking, a, an eight lane cold pool for competitive swimming, uh, a warm water pool with four lanes that would be used for, uh, for uh, swim lessons, um, and, and some other uh, uh, water aerobics and, and things of that nature. Uh, we also have a, uh, a therapy pool that will be uh, uh, a little bit warmer than the warm pool and then a hot tub which will be warmer still. Um, those are the, the types of things that we're thinking. We, at this point, we're also uh, uh, thinking that the, the cold pool will be the competitive pool and we would want to um, perhaps accommodate spectators, uh, maybe up to 300. And so what you see at the top end of that cool pool is um, some bleacher seating. For the gymnasium, um, this one's a simple one. You have one gym right now. Uh, we're suggesting that uh, the program be increased to accommodate two. Each one, uh, each court would accommodate three pickleball courts and so those would be uh, designed, painted, and, uh, and fit up to accommodate the uh, pickleball courts. Uh, potentially volleyball as well and badminton. Right. For fitness areas, uh, right now you've got um, about 850 square feet of total fitness area. Uh, we're proposing um, 3,000 square feet of fitness in terms of uh, free weights and, uh, and equipment as well as um, cardiovascular uh, types of equipment. For fitness studios, right now you have uh, one dance fitness room that's about uh, uh, 1,350 square feet. Uh, we're proposing to increase that to uh, over 3,000 square feet with uh, a number of different size rooms, including um, some fitness storage. Locker rooms, um, again, no doubt that those need to be uh, really addressed. Um, not only would the men's and women's locker rooms be enlarged um, and fit up to today's standards and codes, but also uh, there's been a, um, uh, a desire to add family style locker rooms or cabanas. So that would be in the center. That's what, uh, and I don't know if you can see really the detail of these plans uh, from, from where you are, but uh, the family style locker rooms would be three along here, three along here. Uh, kind of a central uh, area here with day lockers that lead right out to the natatorium. The bottom of 
Well, that's just the way to get in and out of, of that area. Oh, so that's like the hallway? Yeah, so that, uh, you know, you're not, if you're walking uh, from the cabana in your swimsuit to the pool, the people in the hallway or wherever that is uh, would, uh, would not uh, be bothering you. Lakeshore rooms and kitchen. Um, the lakeshore room will be a little bit bigger. Uh, the kitchen needs a substantial increase. Uh, and let me tell you a little bit about the kitchen. It is um, probably, uh, let me just remind myself, it's 800 um, and some change square feet. Um, and in that kitchen, every single day, uh, they prepare 300 to 400 meals. This supports the Meals on Wheels program, which is very robust in this community as well as the Lakeshore Cafe uh, uh, lunch program. So in, in modern kitchens today, mo modern commercial kitchens, the 800 square feet is, uh, I'm, just, I'm just amazed at what comes out of that kitchen. Um, and so the, the, the real need there is for a, a tremendous upgrade in the kitchen and their capacity and their, and their size. And uh, so we're, uh, we're doubling the Lakeshore Room kitchen uh, almost, and most of that um, comes in the form of uh, an, a large kitchen. Okay. The wood shop. Um, right now, um, the wood shop occupies uh, a little over 600 square feet. And that small square footage is uh, a little bit crippled by the fact that it's in a very strange configuration, uh, angled walls, and uh, um, and it's it's not very friendly to organizing woodworking equipment. Um, they also have uh, a couple of um, storage sheds outside that hold quite a bit of um, lumber. Uh, and what we are proposing uh, in terms of a, a new program for them is an in increased wood shop of 1,500 square feet. And uh, that would um, also include tool storage and dust collection. Classrooms and meeting rooms. Uh, right now you've got um, uh, five in kind of a combination of uh, two that are divisible and one larger. And what we're thinking is um, increasing that classroom space by a little bit in a little bit of a different configuration. You still have five rooms, but um, there are uh, two are substantially larger, and uh, and so we're thinking that that accommodates a larger range of um, meeting types. For child watch, uh, the existing child watch is 722 square feet. Uh, what we're proposing is an increase in that child watch because. Uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's actually it's preschool, um, uh, your existing preschool. And what we want to do is increase that square footage to accommodate Child Watch. Senior Lounge, uh, right now you've got about 600 square feet that we would say sort of belongs to the Senior Lounge, although it's in somewhat of a, uh, a circulation zone. Uh, we're proposing a Senior Lounge of just over 1,000 square feet. That should uh, accommodate about 70 people uh, max. For the administration area, um, I think the administrative staff does wonders in the space that they have. Um, it's, it's amazing what they've got squirreled away in, uh, in, in those offices. And I say that in a very supportive way because they've been making do with uh, very little for a long time. Uh, so there's a, a substantial increase to the administrative space uh, that includes some, uh, some meeting rooms and conference rooms and, uh, and again, plenty of storage, which they uh, obviously need. I want to talk a little bit about, and, and thank you for bearing with me through all that uh, community comments and, and program um, uh, uh, overview. Um, I want to talk about the site a little bit uh, because it is a, um, uh, a, a special uh, site that uh, has to accommodate a lot of things during construction and therefore represents a lot of constraints. 
Um, and I, I, I think that a lot of you may have trouble really seeing this, so I'm gonna try my best to point out. Um, this yellow uh, shape here represents the existing senior center, community center, that needs to remain in place all the way through construction. And so operations need to continue there, deliveries need to happen, uh, uh, users and uh, folks who work there need to get in and out, and uh, so there's a lot of things that, that need to continue happening there. There are um, the, the existing recreation side of things would, would come down, and then what we have is we have this area of the site to really work with. Um, the, there is a, uh, on the border and on the north is a drainage ditch that we uh, have looked into a little bit and um, to make a long story short, we've got to stay away from that and, and can't really alter that in, in any meaningful way at all. So, um, so that becomes one of our boundaries, even though the property boundary shown in red extends a lot further. So, um, so we have to stay south of that drainage ditch. We also have, um, which is actually a nice feature um, as part of the Brunner Reservoir, we've got a bunch of uh, wetlands areas here that uh, we're still looking into uh, how much of that, if any, that we might be able to disturb. Um, and so stay tuned for that um, as, as we get more information. Um, one of the things that, that we are very cognizant of, though, is that during construction, we're going to have to maintain a way for people to come in and out and people to park. And so at some point, there's going to be some uh, cordoning off of a portion of, of this site and allowing the contractor to take, to take over the rest of that for, um, for constructing the new building. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a flavor for uh, what the parameters are that we're working within and the, some of the constraints. Go ahead. So we've got some conceptual options to show you. Um, we've got four, and what those four really represent are two different uh, uh, main ideas. There's a two-story scheme and there's a four-story scheme. Each of those has an alternative scheme uh, or option to it. So uh, I'm going to dive right into um, what we are calling uh, conceptual option number six. And this is a two-story scheme. And this, out, this works out really well by virtue of the fact that the things that want to be on the first floor um, and, and, uh, and are comfortable on the first floor really get a place on, on the first floor. So um, starting with uh, the entry, that is, uh, that's got some south and west exposure and somewhat blocked from prevailing winds by the mass of an anatorium, uh, seems to be a, a, a good scenario. Coming into the entry uh, with a front desk here in the center um, and, and a lobby that extends to vertical circulation of uh, elevators and stairs. And then um, it uh, terminates at a senior lounge that has a wonderful view out to uh, Brunner Reservoir. On the community center, senior center side of things, there are uh, senior center offices with some support to the front desk. Uh, there are uh, public restrooms and a pre-function area that fronts a new lakeshore room that again uh, might have a, some kind of a deck um, that you can walk onto right from the lakeshore room that faces Brunner Reservoir. Um, at the end of that pre-function room is a, uh, a new kitchen. Um, and then over here we have some classrooms, two classrooms on the ground floor, and then arts, ceramics, and wood shop. Um, access for uh, services in and out of the kitchen uh, around here. We would have uh, north of the entry here, the recreation center of things. So we've got uh, from here, pool mechanical supporting a a uh, nice size natatorium, flanked by locker rooms, and a circulation zone here that leads to a fitness at the top, uh, two court gymnasium, and preschool child watch with an outdoor play area. 
Um, on the second floor, the second floor gets, gets you um, uh, fitness areas above the locker rooms and over the, uh, uh, the child, wa child watch area with uh, potential fitness deck, deck outside. Um, there is a track then that would be on this level that would uh, run around the perimeter of the uh, two-story gymnasium. Uh, the natatorium would be a two-story volume. Uh, one imagines that you might be able to look out into the natatorium um, as you're uh, in the fitness areas. Then uh, into a more of a central corridor area with uh, vertical circulation, public toilet rooms, more classrooms, uh, recreation services offices, and uh, some other support offices and functions. Um, next. Now, very similar to that previous scheme, we have an uh, option that we call uh, 6A. And the only difference here really is that from the standpoint of trying to make, get the best value out of your construction dollars, we thought that there might be an opportunity instead of tearing down the entire senior center after this facility is built, perhaps part of it could be saved and repurposed as wood shop, arts and ceramics. Um, and the way that would be brought into the fold of, of, of the new community center is by virtue of it being connected by an exterior community plaza or uh, call it green space, garden, terrace, whatever uh, 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 describes it for you. Um, and what our thought was is that that outdoor space could not only be the buffer between functions that are obviously a little bit different than everything else that's going on in here, but it could also serve as a breakout space or an alternate uh, event space uh, in relation to the Lakeshore Room. So there's, we see a lot of advantages here. One is that from this somewhat elevated uh, plaza uh, and whatever event might be happening there, you would look maybe over uh, the service drive and onto Bruna Reservoir. Arguably one of the nicest spots of, of the entire site with great views out, out to the lake. Um, that is the, really the only difference in 6A. Old oh, Child Watch, yes. Um, in this particular instance, we have changed positions of the Child Watch uh, to take advantage of a potential outdoor uh, play area here. And um, I think we uh, just moved the gymnasium down in place of that. Okay, uh, option number seven is a four-story scheme. And um, you might ask yourself, why would we even consider a four-story option? The reason is that uh, if we can decrease the footprint of the building, we end up with more site to accommodate more parking, which uh, has been a concern. And so uh, one of the things that we've uh, thought about is, well, it makes sense to put the pool down on the ground floor. Um, that's, a, that's a heavy thing, bodies of water, uh, hard to structure around those. Um, so what we've done, I'll just take you through this one. In this scheme, we've got a, a, a circular drop off here that leads to a south facing entry. And that brings you into um, a front desk that's uh, at the corner here. Vertical circulation here in red and a, a lobby hallway that leads down to a senior center. Similar arrangement as the other schemes. So we've got a lakeshore room here, a pre-function area, senior services offices, and art and wood shop and kitchen. Um, up top in the recreation area, the natatorium with the pools, flanked by locker rooms, and a corridor that leads uh, down to fitness areas and access to child watch and preschool and um, 
And then the second floor uh, begins to stack. Uh, you've got a two-story space over the auditorium. You've got classrooms here that, uh, the, uh, that you access from the vertical circulation and down through the corridor. Rec services offices here. Third floor, footprints are getting smaller now. Uh, you get a gymnasium and fitness areas that are stacked on top of the natatorium and the classrooms. And, um, and then the gymnasium, again, is a two-story space with an indoor walk-running track, um, all accessible by stairs and elevators. Just to give you an idea, because you know, the, the notion of a four-story building it starts to uh, make you wonder, well, what is that going to look like? And uh, what's that going to do to the views? And what's, uh, what's the prominence? And so this is very early and, uh, in, the, um, in the design of this, but we wanted to just at least show you what the mass of that Scheme 7 would look like. And so the larger mass that you're seeing here depicts the, the gymnasium over the natatorium. And this is a view from Ash Street and Aberdeen Drive, looking southwest. This is a uh, view looking west from the soccer fields. And then uh, this is from standing on the, uh, the levee on the east end of uh, Bruner Reservoir. And this is actually from the street um, or perhaps the sidewalk of uh, Highland Park Drive um, near McIntosh Avenue. So it, there, there's, there's no arguing that it's a, it's a larger mass. Um, we're thinking that it's probably somewhere around 70 feet in height. Um, and uh, just, just needed to uh, give you all a, a sample of what that would look like. Um, the final scheme here, and then uh, we'll open it up for questions, is the alternative scheme to that four-story scheme. So again, what we're suggesting is art and wood uh, remain in a repurposed section of this building. Uh, the same idea with the outdoor uh, plaza or, or uh, terrace. And um, this one has, um, uh, let's see, a little bit of a different arrangement with regard to the um, senior services, senior, or some, sorry, senior lounge. The senior lounge is located at the end of the pre-function, adjacent to the kitchen and uh, across from Lakeshore. The nice thing about this is that there's a direct access out to the uh, community plaza, which might be a, a nice way of extending uh, that, uh, that senior lounge. So with that, and thank you all for bearing with me, um, I'd like to open it up for, for questions. Could yes, you just go back to the last slide? Yes. So you only have the blue, uh, what are those, office or classrooms? Why, are, why isn't anything left up there, like two stories left up there? Like over the green, I can't read what the, what's over in the green on child the care. Okay, okay why is it over in child care? To your left side. So, oh, right, right here? Yeah. yeah, why isn't there anything there on the second floor? Brian, would you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah um, and I will repeat the questions just so that uh, for the, the it gets captured on video. Uh, so the question was, why is there no functions over this area of the plan, which is over the child watch and, and uh, preschool? And the reason for that is there's not enough program to distribute on that second floor. Um, and part of the reason is that, the other part of the reason is, we like what it does to the massing of the building. To being able to step that down or step the massing back um, allows the, the scale of that building to be a little bit more friendly, a little more approachable. If that makes any sense? Okay? By uh, They're asking increasing it to four stories, how much parking does that add? Um, what we're thinking is probably it's, um, there may be an increase of 60 or 70 spaces. 
it's, you know, it's substantial, it's worth considering. Uh, and I'm sorry, I did not repeat that question, so let me do that. Uh, the question was, reducing the footprint with a four-story building, how much parking, how many parking spaces are gained by doing that? And I, and I, I believe that the, the number is somewhere around 60 to 70. Someone else, uh, okay, uh, their question was, uh, I've, I've been uh, using architect speak a little bit and I apologize for that. Um, when I say massing, that means th what's the bulk of the building look like um, and not making architecture out of it. Um, it's just, think of it as a, a, a big block that represents the height, the width, and the depth of, uh, of a building. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. So that what would happen to the space to the left of the second floor? Her original question would happen there. So the question was, what would happen to this space over the first floor on the second floor? Well, that would be roof of some kind. And so that's correct. Yeah, the, 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 the building wall uh, would step back on that second level and continue up. And that, by that way, it breaks up the, the height uh, visually a little bit. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask, I'm a parent of swimmers at the high school and kudos, and so I'm here also to really advocate for what they need as swimmers, because they've got the giant swim team, as you probably know. But, um, so is there any opportunity to even give them more lanes, I mean, than eight? Can we even go any more north near the drainage area or not? Are we pretty much confined now with what the plans look like over here on the table? Sure. So the question, let me repeat that. Uh, the question was, with an eight-lane competitive pool and the demand that we know is uh, on a competitive pool with the programs that are around in your community, is there any opportunity to increase those amount of lanes? Could we go 10? And the, the, the question is, maybe, or I'm sorry, the answer is maybe and, and maybe not. And let, me, let me also just make a, a broad statement about where we are with the program and where we are with the, with the budget. Um, we know, as I said at the outset, that we have we, I think we have adequate budget for 87,500 square feet of new construction. Anything we can do to save money through that would allow us to build more square footage. Um, and square footage equals function, such as the, uh, the, the extra lanes in the pool. What we're afraid of, because we've we've gone through programming and, and noted the, the wish list of desires, and we are, we're over that 87,000 square feet. What we wanna do is we don't wanna cut ourselves short yet of, of saying well, we can't afford that. What we'd rather do is work with a, uh, a contractor and construction manager, as Ben said that they were getting, uh, we're beginning to get them on board, and we'll work with them as a team to understand where the, where the balance is. Um, and so we, uh, we've heard requests uh, for additional lanes, and so you're not the first, and so it's, it's, been, it's been voiced. Um, we just feel like the right area right now in terms of balance is probably eight lanes, but we will keep that, that extra couple of lanes in mind. Yeah, or, or maybe even having something similar to BMAC where you can do the diving well with the bulkhead or something like that so that the, the lanes can stay consistently, consistent depth. That's a, that's a possibility. The, 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 the comment was whether or not we could um, have a, a movable bulkhead that would allow for diving as well as uh, swimming um, at the same time. And that's a possibility. Um, I want to be fair to move around the room a little bit. So, uh, Tom? Yes. Um, I was looking at, on this Design 7A, um, you've got that exterior community <coughs> plaza. That looks like it's, what, about six or 7,000 square feet? It, it may be. It might be. Um, mm -hmm. Would there be a possibility of 
taking that south end of that and extending that wood shop back into some of that outdoor space to make that wood shop a little bit bigger and we can keep our storage in there and we keep it safe for the people that are working in there. So the question, uh, let me repeat that Tom, uh, is would it be possible to expand the wood shop to the east and get the amount of square footage that, that they uh, are really needing for all their storage? And the, the answer is similar to what was said for the extra lanes of the pool. You know, we're going to have to balance what we can afford uh, with what the uh, wishes and desires are. And that's just a reality of construction today. We know that the market in, in construction is, is strong right now, um, that construction costs are, are escalating. Um, we don't know yet what the full impact of the hurricanes in Texas and Florida are on material costs, but um, I'm, I'm going to guess that they're going to go up a little bit. We're all, we also don't know what the impact of the draw for labor to help rebuild those areas is going to do to the labor force here. But we're, we're thinking it's going to tax the available labor here in the, in the Colorado market as well. So we're, those are things that we're all going to have to wait and see. Um, a general contractor will have a better bead on it and, and that will come into better focus as we get closer to construction. And unfortunately, that means that I can't give you an answer today. But, but we, we hear, Tom, we hear your concern about the, the area for, for wood storage. Yes, sir. Similar kind of problem, number one, uh, I kind of represent uh, the pickleball area. Uh, I appreciate the fact that pickleball is being considered seriously in this, in this contract. I would appreciate if, if we could see a layout showing pickleball courts included in layouts. For example, the layouts that we have in Thornton are great. The layouts we have in Erie are terrible. The layouts we had in Impact, now, again, they're terrible because they did not consider the layout at the time they were putting it together. So if we can consider that layout, I'm not saying we need more space, we don't need more space, until we see what we can do to lay the pickleball courts out on, on the uh, courts that you have there. So if we can look at what we've got in Thornton, or, or basically that's the best layout facility that we've got there, but we don't have enough space to put into that. But we can still do a better job at what, what impact there is that with respect to that. You're right in that we do have, we do have in the end of itself, we've got 237 members in Pickleball alone. And in our room field, I've got about 250 on my email list just in the room field area that use this facility. We do appreciate the fact that, uh, that, that Clay and Robin, they give that a great job on what we've done so far. And I think mean, you've done a fantastic job on the layout we've got there today. Thanks. Let me just repeat your, your statement, which is concerning pickleball courts and making sure that, that we review those layouts with members of the pickleball community to make sure that those are satisfying their needs and, and functions. And, uh, sir, I'm uh, more than happy to do that with you. Uh, probably within the next you know, month or two, it would be the appropriate time. Um, so thank you for that. Right. Let's use the microphone. Sort of echoing what Bernie just said. Can you go to the six or six A? Either one of those. Sure. The, the pickleball is on here. Just so you know, that helps. Yeah, it's very light, okay. um, and it's it's just hard to read. Yeah. Right. Six or six eight. That's either one's fine. My question concerns the gymnasium, so I'll start with what Bernie was just saying. Are there, is there going to be a net or something dividing those two gyms, or is that open between those two? Question one. Question two, are you going to have seating like you have in the pool area for the gym area, so the parents can watch their kids play basketball? Question three related to gym. Why not put the track around the pool, not just around the gym? So gym and pool, both at the second level. Thank you. Thanks for those. Uh, I'm going to repeat those questions anyway. So question number one was, will there be a, 
separation between the two courts? And uh, the answer is yes, there will be a, uh, a gym curtain, divider curtain, that will drop off, uh, down and you could leave it there or you could raise it up depending on the event and activity that's going on. Um, question number two is will there be spectator seating in the gymnasium? And we do have room for that. I think um, whether or not there are bleachers um, on day one as we're depicting here in the, uh, the kind of modest uh, white bands here at the top and bottom of the gymnasium, uh, we will have room for those. Um, and so those can be easily added even if the budget in the beginning doesn't uh, allow that. Um, third is why couldn't we weave the walk-run track all the way around and through the pool? And the answer to that is that the, you know, we, we could, but it would be, uh, there, there are some expenses there that would be somewhat prohibitive. So the pool environment is a different environment than what you have in the gym. It's much more humid. Um, and what we want to do is try to control that and, and keep that in the natatorium and not impact the other spaces. And so if we open up that to the track in, in two locations, we're going to get um, something that happens naturally, which is um, humidity in the air seeks to equalize itself um, you know, very naturally and rapidly. And so um, that's something that we, we think is probably going to be problematic. Um, my question has to do with the financing. I thought, you know, I was at that city meeting where it was approved for $40 million, yet you said the budget was $34 million. Oh, first of all, I want to thank Kevin, I want to thank Ben, I want to thank uh, you, Brian, as well, too, and the staff for having the city input. I really appreciate it when we feel So I really appreciate that. So when I saw the finances, I wanted to hear those slides, please. Uh, you talked that the budget was 34, 34 roughly Point 34 two. million, mm -hmm. and I remember getting in front of city council and saying it was approved for 40. Is there six million dollars for contingency? What you the 40 million dollars? Uh, the, the question was about the the budget for the project. There are there are different categories of costs, and the number that I was quoting earlier of the 34.2. That's hard construction only. That's the, that's the amount that can go to a, uh, a construction contract. But there are other costs that uh, we refer to as soft costs that make up the difference between the 34.2 and the 40 million. And those cover things like you know, professional fees, my fee. Um, it also covers city costs. Uh, someone's, someone has to pay for Ben's time um, and, uh, and, and other services that are outside the normal construction contract, such as um, uh, uh, site survey, uh, soils investigation, um, and, and uh, materials testing. All those things go in to add to the pay for the cost of actually performing the, the project. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. I do want to make a comment on the pool itself as well, too. I do believe that an eight-lane pool is sufficient for the needs that we have. And understanding that the other programs that we need here as well, too, Meals on Wheels is very important, the pickleball folks, the woodworking, and everybody else. So as a master swimmer that's been here for many years, I'm very happy with eight-lane pool. That statement was, uh, I'm doing this just for the video, sir. Uh, the, the statement was, that uh, uh, he is very satisfied with the eight-lane pool as a, as a master swimmer. Um, I think that in all categories of and elements of this project, what we're going to really be challenged with as we move further into the project is really balancing um, the, the function and the needs with the budget. And I, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, yeah, and and, and don't, don't, don't go away thinking you, that you're special because uh, nearly every project goes through these types of wants and wishes versus what can really be afforded. And so that's um, part, of, part of what we are hoping to get is just what you're giving us right now is, is community input and, and give us some, some feedback and direction. Yes, ma'am. Since we have budget constraints, would it be possible, like as Tom said, to um, 
in order to expand the wood shop maybe at a future date to make sure that the construction that goes in place now can accommodate that. Same with the second floor above those classrooms. Could that like low bearing be built into the roof? I don't know how much more that would cost, but to provide for future expansion at a later date. Because I mean, it, it, I understand what you're saying about the massing, but I think we have real needs in this community and this is an opportunity to make sure that we can address those. And, um, and, and I, I just don't want to see us shortchange ourselves because of what we have available now. I want to make sure that we're, that maybe we can use this as a, as a tool to expand in the future. Good points and, and I appreciate you bringing that up. I, I think in whatever concept option that is adapted and we move forward with, I think one of the most important things that we can do for the future of this facility and this, and this community is to think about where are the next stop, uh, steps in the chess game for expanding. And, and if we believe that those are real and viable, how do we make it easy at this point with minimal cost to do that? Uh, structuring uh, that area, as you spoke of, that would allow the ease of adding a second level without uh, you know, too much disruption or having to um, restructure that part of the building. Uh, so it's, it's about planning and, um, and thinking uh, a couple of steps ahead in that chess game and, um, and seeing what we can do within the budget to make sure that that that, um, that it happens. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I want to go all the way back to the, with the woman with the microphone. Thank you. So, are you making any accommodation for the meals on meals drivers to be able to park close to the kitchen so that and then leave safely so that we don't have to carry our bundles, which are numerous and heavy? out to a parking lot somewhere uh, and put in our car. Yes, um, the, the question was, how are we accommodating the drivers that support that Meals on Wheels program? Uh, in other words, coming in uh, and making it easy for them with their vehicles to pick up the, uh, the bags and boxes of food and, uh, and put them in their car and make their deliveries. And yes is the answer to that question. We've, we've thought about it. Um, we have toyed with the idea that there might be a, um, a dedicated uh, couple of parking spots that would allow an ease of access in to the building and into the kitchen. But the more we thought about it and the more that we um, thought about the distance and the number of doors you go through, we came back to the notion of maybe it should work the way it works right now, which is uh, you're allowed to drive down to the loading area and go through a door directly into the kitchen, pick up the meals, and get on your way. But that has been a consideration and one that we've given quite a bit of thought to. Yes, ma'am. Could you describe the um, roof design over the You know, we'd love to see skylighting uh, above a space like a gymnasium. I think that it's, it's a, well, actually it does work out pretty well, uh, not only from, if you do it right, if you do it from a um, standpoint of gaining some daylighting and reducing your energy cost of artificial lighting, it, it helps out quite a bit. Um, there, are, there are obviously good ways and bad ways to accomplish that. Um, but I, I can tell you that we've done it before with, with great success. The, the question really is, um, and I, I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, always going back to the budget and balancing what we can afford and what we, uh, and what we can't. Um, I would say that from a functional standpoint that most folks would rather gain square footage and function than maybe skylights over a gymnasium. Um, but we're, we're a few months away from those types of decisions, to be honest with you. And, uh, but I think you know, th these are the kinds of things that, um, 
that my team and the project team, uh, including all the people from the rec center and, and the city, are going to have to grapple with. Maybe when you talk with Bernie, that could be a discussion because skylines are difficult to play with. You know. She's just asking. Basically, the skylines that we have in most of our facilities mm -hmm. is a deterrent, not a, a benefit to pick up on. Because the sun comes in there and goes on the courts, we can't see. So sure. Think whether it's sure. in Lafayette or here or here or West Preston, people stop playing because of the sun coming through the skylines. So yeah, you know, that's why I that's why I preface my answer with you've got to do it right, um, and uh, the, there's. Nobody gains from having direct sunlight hit the court, so it's got to be it's got to be reflected, uh, diffused, and um, and dispersed properly. Yeah. Uh, I skipped over somebody a while ago. Was it you? I have a concern about the classrooms all being on the second floor on that one concept mm -hmm. because there are several in the group I belong to who are in use walkers have canes, oxygen tanks, and you're expecting yeah. us all to go into one entrance, mixed with everybody else, and then use an elevator. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's a distance. If you look at how far off that is, we'll lose members, unfortunately. Yeah. I think it, it's much better served for seniors if you have classrooms on the first floor that are easily accessible. You know, I, uh, let me just repeat that, that that comment and concern? That was my question too, and mine was more about emergency um, evacuation. With just sure. Elevator. Well, there, there are two. Oh, okay. there, there are two in, in each of these options. Um, sorry, I didn't point that out. Let me just repeat the question a little bit. The, the question uh, and concern was that in one of those options that we showed, the classrooms are all up on the second floor. And that is, uh, and, and I will say that the staff has been the first to point that out, that that's a hardship for a, a lot of members. And that's uh, for the, exactly the same reasons that you, that you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, I, I understand the concern and I think that we will work hard to not have all the classrooms on an elevated level, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, kind of following up on the question about the natural light, mine is more in general of lighting, especially for the pool area. I'm at Pol Dirta, they have a lot of natural light, which is very nice. Um, and also for energy efficiency, um, what considerations you, you guys will put into that for the long term? Are you talking about the pool only? Um, well, I started with the pool, with natural lighting, the aesthetics but also how, what you're doing for just general energy efficiency, um, saving costs and well. Well, good question. Uh, and I, I'm just going to paraphrase your question for you. The, the question was about what are we doing in terms of uh, energy efficiency for lighting and balancing that with daylighting um, in, in all spaces. And while it's a little too early for us to be specific about that, what I can uh, tell you is that um, we believe that every space should have access to daylight except maybe the locker rooms. Um, that, and and that's, that's certainly our aim and our, and our goal. Um, but we want to do it properly. Um, and and you know, things, spaces like the natatorium, what you don't want from a safety standpoint is glare and reflection from natural light coming in and hitting the pool surface. And, and from a safety standpoint, the uh, uh, lifeguards not being able to see what's underneath that surface. Um, and so there, there are different concerns for every different type of space and uh, we're going to be taking that into consideration. In terms of artificial light, um, the, the state of the art in lighting today is uh, LED lighting. Um, it, it takes a fraction of the energy to, to get the same amount of light. Um, also, it it um, it operates at a uh, lower temperature, and so you're not you're not running your HVAC system to counterbalance the heat that you've gained from the lighting, uh, which is uh, surprisingly a substantial uh, percentage of of the heat gain in a building. 
So uh, we, we intend for this building to be uh, very energy efficient. And we've got um, the team of uh, people uh, uh, in uh, consulting engineers' offices as well as my office that, is, uh, that will be uh, making sure that that happens. Um, you, you decide, you've got the microphone. Speaking of energy, is there any plans or anything in here for uh, solar assist like we have on most of the other city buildings? No concrete plans as yet, but I gotta tell you, we're gonna have plenty of flat roof surface with a lot of exposure to some good southern daylight. And I would say that if we don't do it at the very beginning, the least we want to do is plan for it to be added in the future. Okay. Okay. Um, microphone, wherever you... And the third floor, what's to the left of the gymnasium? On the third floor, we've got um, some fitness and uh, group fitness rooms, as well as uh, some cardiovascular uh, machines. In this particular scheme, uh, imagine if you're on a treadmill or a stationary bike or an elliptical machine, and you're at that third floor and you're looking west and you've got the view of the mountain ranges. That's the intent with that, okay? Um, I'm curious about the yoga class. Yes. And will that be on a different floor or will that still be held in Lakeshore like it is now? Yoga for seniors, the intent is to still have yoga in the, in the Lakeshore room. Okay. And I will also like to mention that you said that you're planning for like 60 in that class? That's, that's what I'm told, yes. Okay, because I was just curious because uh, right now, sometimes there's more than 40 in our class right now. <coughs> and I'm thinking about the girls part of it and sure. how popular it's become mm -hmm. from the 12 people that I started with in 1998. <laughs> And you're up to 40 now? Yes. That's, that's great. Yes. That's, that's a successful program. So the yoga class will stay here. Yes. So I wanted to take a second to address a couple of things. Here are a couple of questions in regards to energy efficiency. The city has added service in, services into Davis's contract so that we can make those analysis and those smart choices to make it sustainable and usable in the future. We're not LEED certifying the building, but we're taking many of the steps to achieve LEED type certifications without paying for that LEED certification. Um, to address the comments in regards to seniors um, on the first floor and having services on the first floor, we've talked about the Lakeshore room and how that's going to be a multi-purpose room. And many of the same classes that you have, that you, you have now are still going to be in those rooms on the first floor. And that's the intent to make those bigger, expandable, to be dividable so that we can have those services on the first floor for those who have trouble getting to the upper floors. Great. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks. Hi. Hi. I just have a few questions on the pool. Um, is the pool 25 short course meters or 25 yards? Um, I actually have a couple questions. And then I also wanted to find out if it's deep enough for water polo. Um, and we always want to make sure that there's enough for seating for swim meets and other events there. Um, and then I came in the middle of the bulkhead comment, so I wanted to find out a little bit more information. She's no longer here, but I was just curious as to what she was thinking with bulkheads. Um, I've been a competitive swimmer for 40 years, and I know um, in order to have a bulkhead, you need a 50 meter pool, which would be really awesome if we could have a 50 meter pool. Um, you can't really to have a bulkhead in a 25 meter pool because there's no efficiency, you can't do anything. Um, so if that's an option to have a 50 meter pool, an 850 meter pool, that would be great. Um, 
And then I know uh, concept 6A, um, there's a, oh, yeah, oh, wait, no. Uh, oh, you want me to go back there? <laughs> okay, I was like trying to follow along. I'm just curious, um, the um, design between the cold pool and the warm pool, there's is there a wall or something, um, just wanted to find out a little bit more information on that. Uh, it, just, I want to make sure that uh, I'm understanding. Yeah. Are you yeah. asking about these? Yeah, yeah. yeah those are, um, let's call those placeholders right now for something that um, is symbolizing some sense of uh, separation between the cold competitive pool and the other bodies of water. And so that when we, there's swim meets there, that there's kind of a, an implied barrier. Um, and it, uh, we, we don't know exactly what that is. It, it could be a half wall, it could be um, uh, benches with uh, a, a wall element in there. So yeah, but that's, that's the intent. And then the pool, is it 25 short course meters, 25 yards? And I gotta be honest with you, I don't, I don't know the difference. Uh, what, I will, what I will say is that um, we have a, a, a very fine national uh, aquatics consultant on board that will, um, you know, sometime when they're in town, I'd, I'd love to get all the uh, avid swimmers uh, to, to come to maybe a, a meeting that can voice questions, concerns. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, it's Aquatic Design Group. They're out of uh, Carlsbad, California. Uh, this gentleman in the back has had his hand up for like uh, a long time. So, so thank, thank you. Uh, a couple comments and then a, a question. Uh, I've seen a couple iterations of these over the past few months. Um, I will say that I like the fact that it looks like the warm water pool is striped for 25 yards and has lanes. I think that adds a lot of versatility to it, whether you have a high school meet where there's eight lanes of competition and then it provides warm and warm down. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's older folks who want to swim laps but don't want to swim laps in an 81 degree pool, uh, or you know, I coach for the uh, Barracudas here, and that's something where you could put five, six, seven year old kids in that water and they're going to be much better off there and be able to pay attention rather than being in the 81 degree water. So in essence, you know, you have an eight lane pool, but if there are additional 25 yard lanes or meters, um, it does add a lot of versatility to the facility. So I, I think that that's awesome that, that that is that length and keeping that, at, you know, so adding to the length count is, or the length, the length count is awesome. Um, so thank you. Uh, I have one about the, um, the, the uh, four level and the two level. Is there, are the prices, I guess, estimated comparable? Because to me, um, if the, the main gain from going to four levels is that we gain 60 parking spots, but we might lose amenities if it is more expensive, I don't know that that sounds like it's a fair trade-off at all. So if you could speak to the price point on those and how we're deciding between the two and the four. You bet. Thanks. And, and I think that's a, that's a very astute question. The question was um, the difference in cost between a two-story a two option and a four-story option. And, does that cost differential justify the additional parking that you would get from a four-story version? So the answer is yes, the four-story version we believe would be um, more expensive. And, and the question is, is it substantially more? Um, and I don't, I don't believe so. But here are the things that you, that you get from a four-story building that are um, additional cost elements. Number one is uh, increased cost of structure uh, because you're, you're now building structure that's not supporting just a roof but you're supporting two additional floors and so that cost does go up in terms of weight of steel. Um, the other um, geometric uh, reality of a four-story building versus two is that you're going to end up with more um, exterior uh, wall of the building, uh, just because it's 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 just the way the geometry works out. You've got um, more height um, and just a little bit less of uh, perimeter, and so that just adds more cost. What you do end up with as a trade-off, though, is you're building less roof, you're building a little bit less foundation. 
but you're also spending more on vertical circulation, stairs, elevators, and uh, I don't know if any of you priced elevators uh, lately, but they're about $30,000 a stop, um, so it's, they're, they're not cheap. Um, but in, this, in the grand scheme of things, that's a drop in, in, in the bucket. But these are things that we're, we're going to have to weigh and consider, obviously, in terms of determining which direction we go. And I think, I think it's an excellent question. Uh, sir? This, uh, this touches on a point that I wanted to make. Uh, I've been banging around the city for a long time, and I can remember when they built a library in the auditorium. Um, we only had to, when they got to the, to the end of the project, they had to um, reduce the size of the library. They had to reduce the size of the auditorium big time. Now we regret those decisions, but that's all the money we had. Same is true of the Health and Human Services building. They had to reduce it, not by a lot, but they had to reduce the size because of the cost. So, you know, we have higher construction costs, we have maybe a short labor supply, and these things are all gonna be in play. So I think, you know, we have to take a conservative view of this and instead of waiting until the last minute and saying, oh gee, you know, we had to cut out a pool, or we had to cut out a gym, or we had to cut out, um, a senior lounge or whatever it might be. Um, so I think we ought to keep our fingers crossed uh, as we go forward on it. Yeah, thanks for that comment. I, you know, just I, I share your concerns with with all of that, and um, there are there are certain things that are not in our control, but the things we can control is to keep the reins on on the scope of the project. Um, I just want to comment, though, on the, the cutting of square footage. You know, I'd rather see you um, build the square footage you need, but maybe reduce the amount of, of fit up in some of that and, and wait for those improvements or embellishments, if you will, uh, later. That way you've, you've got the area that you need. Uh, and you know, obviously, that's got to be balanced with you know, you've got to be able to have a functional facility from day one. So that's got to be carefully thought out and considered if you go that direction. Okay. Um, just three comments for you related to the parking. Can we use any of the parking that's across the street? In, In the bay? bay? Uh, no, across the government. Oh, uh, and uh, across the combs. Uh, I, my understanding is yes. That um, is that correct, Ben? Yes. To answer that question, um, for an eighty-seven thousand five hundred space or square foot building, we're going to need a neighborhood of four hundred by code. So we're way below that. So the intent is that we're going to be moving parking over into those lots as it expands. But there's also discussions about. Um, redesigning the parking lot for the bay along with the BCC so that we can increase that space on this side of the street. And ben, I like that. So we said we'd hire a traffic consultant who specializes in parking and parking lots. And we'll look at the entirety of the complex where we have opportunities for shared parking. So we expect there are a lot of opportunities for that. And that'll be something we'll look as we go forward. We don't want to over park it. Sorry, I have two more things. Um, on observations on the layouts, that one layout that has the large uh, outside area, which is beautiful to look at, consider the fact that that could be expansion in the future. So that's a future Absolutely. thing mm -hmm. for that, to pick mm -hmm. that option. And the second thing was if you're going to put a deck on the outside of the Bayshore area, can you put a walkway that doesn't go through, Lakeshore area, I'm sorry, that doesn't go through the Lakeshore area so that you could get to that deck and enjoy it without having to go through the room. Just a couple of other I think questions. I understand what your question is, is is there a way to get, could there be a way to get to the deck um, without going through the building? In other words, maybe uh, stop there, rest and enjoy, um, and then continue along your, your path walk. 
and I think the answer there is yes, we'd love to see that happen. And um, I think that's, a, that's our strong possibility. Tom, you've been waiting for a while. Yes. Um, I'm not just woodshine, so. <laughs> um, getting 60 extra spaces, I think, is, is a great idea. I'm not too keen on a four-story building up here. But getting those 60 spaces is going to help out because in the summertime, both this lot and the bay lot is packed. And we have to try and restrict right now our parking in front of the senior center for the seniors because it gets full for people from the bay. So adding 60 spaces may not sound like a lot, but I think in the summertime, it's going to be a great deal easier to maintain our parking for the seniors. Um, the other question I have is, uh, there are occasions uh, that we have some seniors coming in that need one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling. And is there any provisions in any of these plans for a private room that, say, Patty or whoever else is is going to be doing the, the counseling for these for some of these seniors? Um, that are in dire straits. Uh, a place for them to sit down and, and actually talk to these people where they're private and you know help the seniors out that are really hurt. Sure. Yeah, yeah and great question. question. And uh, what I uh, know that we have programmed in the senior services administration area is uh, a conference room or two that would be uh, more than adequate for that kind of conference. Um, so yeah, but and thank you for thinking of that because that's 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 important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'd like to say thanks a lot for the great presentation, thank and you. also for the uh, any comments from all the, uh, the participants here. Uh, one question that deals with the programmatics of wild uh, construction: What's the plans for providing these services? to the community that they're currently being used. Uh, for instance, what are the plans for the pools, the recreation there, as well as uh, pickleball access? So is it gonna be expected to all those participants go to Durga and other facilities? Is there going to be any kind of credit, if you will, for uh, the uh, residents to go to other nearby facilities? I'm the Director of Recreation Services. So thank you all for coming tonight first. We appreciate your input. Um, that's a great question. We're still really working through a lot of that plan, not knowing exactly what our deadline is for construction. A lot of our programs that we currently house in the senior services area will stay in that area. Our biggest concern is obviously the pickleball and the swimming. And we're, gonna, we're still working through those plans and what we're going to do. So when we get there, We'll definitely make sure that all the user groups know and understand how we're going to do that. We are thinking about talking with some of the other local areas, uh, with Westminster, maybe North Clinton, different areas, and saying, hey, what would they be willing to do to trade services? So uh, there's a lot of things on the table. We're just not there yet. We're not there with a solid plan. But when we do, we're not going to tell you last minute either. We're going to give you a heads up. So uh, our plan is at least two to three months ahead of time that we'll be putting that information out to talk about it. We are going to open up some pitfall times at the Fall Dorga Recreation Center. So we're just going to have to balance that use with some of the pickleball players and the basketball players. So a lot of drop in basketball that occurs. And we got men that play, men's league kind of that plays on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we'll balance that use over there. We're also going to have to balance that with some of our youth programs. So our youth basketball will have to go over there for that period of time as well in the evenings. So it's going to, it's going to crowd the Paul Dirty Recreation Center a little bit on the programming side. But I think at the end, it's going to be worth it to have a brand new center and an opportunity once it reopens in a couple of years. So we're getting there. We're still working on that plan. We're not, we're not leaving anybody out. We're trying to think of every possibility. And so when we get there, we'll make sure that we're getting that information out. Hi, 
everyone. I'm Laura Peterson. I think I probably know half the crowd here, actually. Um, first, I want to say it's a pleasure to live here in Broomfield. And I've traveled uh, probably into 40 of the 52 states that we have. And we have a lovely, lovely place. This is fantastic that we're redoing the Recreation Center. We'll have two beautiful facilities. I'm so proud of what we have. A um, couple of things that I'd just like to comment on. The pool area, I want to go, thank you so much. It's been years. Um, we've been talking about trying to get a, another pool here um, or redoing BCC for about 10 years. There's been an aquatic committee and such. The design there that you guys came up with is fantastic. Um, eight lanes, I'll reiterate what Al said over here, and, and um, I believe this is Coach swim team, is fantastic. The cold water pool was needed. Um, the separate three lanes for a warm water pool will help people who don't want to swim laps, um, swim laps in a warm water area. But on top of that, the therapy pool is fantastic. I don't know how many, I mean, we're in the baby boom area. There's got to be half this crowd here who was born between 46 and 64. And so people will want to use that for aerobics. Um, water is a sport for life. You can swim competitively. You can do water aerobics. You can get in and walk. You can just sit in it and go into the um, hot tub. So I think that's fantastic. The, we have a great youth population that we do need the two um, uh, the basketball courts. They're needed. I know that we share space within the community and it's awesome that we share with the um, high school and the middle schools in the area, which is fantastic. I think there was a comment about um, asking about space for viewing. I think a lot of those uh, games for the youth, in the end, when they're being played, they play them at the high school and the middle schools and stuff. So um, if they can bring in bleachers here, that would be helpful. Uh, big question, I think, a couple of people asked about it, to the height as opposed to parking. I do, I would love to see the numbers on that. Several of us have asked, 60 you know, spaces, 70 spaces, can we get closer so people don't have to, you know, share the spaces over with uh, the bay? Kevin mentioned, um, can we bring it together and have a community parking? I know, and there was a, a focus group that asked about uh, a garage. Could we do a, um, a garage? I think that might be expensive, but I kind of wonder if we can blend one garage in the center that goes to the baseball field, goes to um, the bay, goes to the aquatic center and this new design, and then over to um, the courthouse, if it would all work. I don't know, but it would be neat to run the numbers on how we could do that and then still have handicapped parking to get people in and out. Meals on Wheels, I don't know where she went, but that's a program we've got to keep. Uh, it's been mixed in a lot of communities and other states and stuff. And again, I gotta go back to the baby boomers. You need that program, and yes, if we get people in and out, because she knows it's, it's a godsend. Um, I have parents who are aging too. Um, so thank you for all you're doing. I think a lot of the rooms there, the conference rooms, are great multi-space that we can use for the counseling. Somebody mentioned counseling. I think we can get that done, we need that. Yes, we do, um, and use it for aerobics and things like that too. Those are probably a little bit bigger, but um, thank you for creating this wonderful design. Um, design seven, I just had one quick question and I'm thinking it's just a little bit of an error on the thing. Is it seven lanes, like it points out, or is it actually eight lanes in design seven, four stories? I think the cold water pool on all schemes should be eight lanes. Eight lanes. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure we had clarity okay. on that. Yeah. You bet. Um, but I, I vote for six. I think the six with the additional programming. Somebody talked about being able to build out um, in the future. You know, we need to make sure we think about where we can add space mm -hmm. you know, in mm -hmm. the future because that was kind of the problem here. Just kind of let this go for. 50 years, I don't know, before we kind of, oh my gosh, we've got to do something with it. 
But if we can get something going and add to it in 15 years or something, that'd be great. Holder has been awesome, right? We all love it. Yeah, thank you. Agreed. Thanks. She did address one of my questions, which is the multi-level garage. So I'm not gonna ask that now, but I do have okay. um, a concern and a couple of questions. One is with the uh, four levels. I'm concerned that it will obstruct the view of the mountains. Um, the picture that showed, not, yeah, it kind of blocks the, the mountains, um, especially for people mm -hmm. who live back here. Um, right. Right. And I know I like to take walks, I like to look at the mountain range, so I'm concerned about that. Um, the question though, as a com if, if need be, as a compromise, um, have you considered a three-story building um, if the two-story doesn't work out um, and compare it to the parking situation? And um, also with the four-story, with the basketball, or the gym above the, the swimming area, the noise level, um, you know, when there are events happening at the same time, what would that sound like? So all good questions. And let me, let me address those um, uh, maybe one by one here. The, um, let's see, the first was, remind me the first question. The, um, the obstructive, obstructive views. views. Yes, and and we knew intuitively that a four-story building in this setting might uh, be objectionable in terms of the views it would obstruct, and that's why even at this early stage, we've tried to give you a sense of what that would be like. Uh, we don't want to sugarcoat it at all. It it is what it is. Um, you know, it's a it's a seventy store, a seventy foot high building. Um, thereabouts. And um, what you can see is that from some views and some perspectives, it would obstruct the range of, of, of the mountains out to the west. So uh, yeah, I, I, I think your concern is valid. Um, and uh, it's one of those things that need to be weighed um, along with uh, additional cost of the building versus gaining some parking spaces. So um, those, are the, those are the choices, I think. Um, and I'm sorry, you're going to have to remind me of your other questions. Well, the other question with four story is the gym above the... Right, the yeah. Um, you know, the, the, uh, there will be um, a long span structure over the natatorium that supports the, the gymnasium. And when I say that, I, I mean that um, there will be some, uh, some noise and vibration, um, but that can be dampened to some degree by the thickness of, of a slab that we put over that and how we treat the underside, um, which would be the, the natatorium side of things. But I, I don't know that we would be able to mitigate any uh, any sound that comes from uh, the gymnasium, especially if they're having an event there with spectators. I think it's just a, it, it's probably a reality that, that um, I'm not going to tell you that we can mitigate it 100%. Okay. And then the three story option. Yeah, you know, the three story option um, probably does not make sense, and I'll tell you why. The natatorium and the gymnasium are both two-story heights. They need that height for, for the way they function. And if you can't stack them, then you're putting them on the first floor. And there's just not enough program then to fill out a third floor after you put both of those down there. Does that make sense? Okay, so the second mm -hmm. floor drawing, the part above, uh, can you go back to the previous one? The second floor, so, or you want the, the first story? Okay. Yeah. Um, so for the second story um, part, the part above the pool is, I guess, open, right? Yeah, that is, that's open to below okay. at, the, at this level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? I don't think I did a very good job of explaining that. I, I think so. I'll have to think about it more. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh,
couple of questions uh, to the but towards the budget that initially, and I have a couple of comments. I've been swimming in this pool since the building opened. I think I was in the for the team time when they opened the building. And I still swim in today with Al and the rest of the team. So I really uh, want to thank you for the pool. A links would be great. I recognize the length on both the pool and the uh, warm water pool, 25 yards or meters, one or the other, uh, would be helpful. Um, cost controls on the buildings. I do this same deal with uh, buildings to build over the same on older cameras. And what we found is the devil's in the details. What I like, I can tell you the things I'd like to see. I'd like to see those little centrifuge spinners to spin dry your, your suit after you get out of the pool. And all those little details are really what make the building, but that's where the costs are. We employ a number of ways of trying to control those costs. Um, and I was curious what the city of Bluefield does. So, for example, we do um, sole sourcing of some of our finished material. Uh, we do product submittals where everything that the contractor's going to put in the building, somebody with us looks at it first. Um, you know, but some of those finer things, that that's where the money ends up. Now we can't put eight lanes, we have to do six. So what is the city doing with this project to try to maintain control of the cost during the construction? Well, if you're addressing that to the, the, the city, I'm going to let Ben maybe uh, address that. <laughs> I was just curious what um, controls are in place to um, I also think you'd have an easier time selling the four stories if you had a more uh, accurate conceptual drawing, like the architectural what it will really look like, or are we going to speed up at some point? The yeah. answer to that is, uh, is if, if we decide to go down the road for a four-story building, we'll, that, that's when that will begin to develop. Um, so, uh, you know, this is just this was just giving you a sense of the you know the impact in a general way to the view. So to address the um, the budget, um, the way we're handling that is to is by the selection of the contractor process. We're looking for a CMGC. That means a construction manager general contractor. When you bring them on early, which you know it's, it varies when you bring them in. Sometimes you can bring them in later. Sometimes you bring them in earlier. The earlier you get the contractor in in the process of the design process, you're able to make those big decisions without getting too far down the structural path. So those cost estimates early on with the contractor that's actually going to do the work. Um, the CMGC contractor is also called a contract that's an at risk. So they agree to a contract to provide so many square feet for so many dollars. So that process is what's going to help govern this. Um, to address the four story, I wanted to bring up a couple other things. Um, on the two story, we have a wide footprint and that can get into some additional site work constraints because we have a small site. So there's site costs that could go up with the larger plan. There's also opportunities with the four story plan to expand on what Brian's saying. It provides a better opportunity for expansion, I would say, for one, because you don't box everything into the middle of the building. You have more surface area, and then you can do a two-story addition. And that would help with a small site. So um, with a small site, still having room to build and grow to the outside is a plus for the four-story, for sure. Um, I, think I think I answered everybody's question there, right? I represent the people that do water aerobics in the warm pool. Right now we have six lanes and we're full. And there's times that there's two classes going on. And so I'd like to know, is it the, the configuration going to be the same from the three feet down to the same depth? Because we'll have deep water going on, we'll have regular water uh, aerobic classes or an arthritis class going on, and four lanes is going to squish us. And especially if this is so, um, such a wonderful place, people, we're going to get more people in. And we might even get people from, right now we have people from Westminster coming to our classes because they can't take the noise in the Westminster 
pool the way the noise is over PDRC, so I'm so thankful we aren't having the water slide and the river running and all that kind of thing. That I, I kind of feel like we're getting left out here. We're losing our two lanes that you know we currently have. So is there any way that we can get those extra two lanes put back in? Well, um, it's a good question. And, and I, uh, unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you about the depth of the pool. Uh, we're just not at that point yet. But I think your concerns about um, leaving a lot of that pool open for use for water aerobics is, is, uh, is well-founded. So um, you know, that obviously would impact the depth. Um, so those are, those are concerns that we'll bring back to our aquatics consultant and uh, figure that out. In terms of additional two lanes for the warm pool, I, I, the, the budget is going to dictate that. And so right now, uh, we are showing four. That's what we think we can afford. But um, you know, it, it, it depends on how things go. How many square yards are you losing from the pool as it is right now? and the projection that you have with the four lanes, how many actual usable yards are you losing from this pool right now as it is? Yeah, you know, I don't have an answer for you about that, but, but I can, I can we, we can look at it. Um, because we've mm -hmm. had like in our arthritis classes, 47 people at one time with two instructors, yeah. three days a week, and then that's on Saturday, and then on Tuesday and Thursday again. And we need all that space, because mm -hmm. you've got to have at least six feet width um, mm -hmm. per person. Sure. I, I don't have an answer for you on the differential between the square yardage right. of those pools. But uh, what we can do is uh, go back and, and take a look at that. We can also calculate the number of people that we think we can get into the proposed warm pool and, um, and uh, maybe report back to you. Thank you very much. Uh-huh, sure, yeah. Would it not be true that everybody right now is sharing one pool and the, the temperature it is, the six lanes, everybody shares that, but we would have the opportunity to have more frequent classes or more times to have individual classes if we're able to split people up. There's going to be some, some of the activities are going to be in the cold pool, some are going to be in warm pool. We have two pools now. There's more opportunity to have more classes, so the classes won't be as big, but more frequent. Yeah, but who's going to do water aerobics in an 81 degree pool? Nobody. That's the problem now with one pool is the water's colder than what a lot of people like. And by, that, by having two pools, being able to distinguish these are warm pool activities, these are cold pool activities, we'd have more time to have more activities in, in, in a set of so the pool. You could, you could have um, aerobics during the time that the swim, the swim team is swimming in the pool. Right, so right now, when the swim team has the, the pool, aerobics can't go on. So it's basically, you can do it at the same time people are, would be using the pool for cold water stuff. That is an excellent point about the diversity of use um, as, as uh, made possible by a number of bodies of water here of different temperatures. And so um, you know, the, the competitive swimmers can swim all day in this pool. And that opens up a lot of time, a lot of different time slots for classes and uh, activities that are suited specifically for the warm water. One last thing. <laughs> <Didn't cut off. laughs> um, I just wanted to say that um, looking at the four different plans we have up there, I was looking at 7A, um, and I think that's going to be our best option, I would say, personally, um, just because of, of we've got that huge community plaza that is open. Um, I believe that that would also give us um, a little more space for expansion if we needed to, because we could eat up some of that space. 
We've got a big patio that's off of the, the lakeshore room, um, or the big deck that's off of that lakeshore room, and we can cut some of that community plaza down and use that for other things that may come up later. Um, the reason I like 7A is number one, we pick up more parking spaces. Yeah, it's going to be a little more expensive. You know, I'm an engineer, I used to be in construction. Um, I think 7A is probably the best concept that we have on the board right now. Thank you. Thanks for that opinion. I just want to just maybe paraphrase what, what you said here is that one of the benefits of a scheme or an option like this is that we've got this open community plaza, which a, a few of you have said tonight, that's a great placeholder for expansion of f the facility from really three different directions um, as needed. And that's a, I think that's a really viable uh, option to have in our pocket. Thanks. Plus the extra parking, plus Mm -hmm. So that that was the thing I was forgetting earlier. <laughs> and the indoor track. Is that the, the four-story option also provides a better view. One of the big things we've been hearing in a lot of comments, views, we, we want to take advantage of the views. The, the four-story option does give you much more versatility with the scenery that we have. And we did a tour with the stakeholder group, and we've been to a lot of facilities, and I have to say, we definitely have a gym compared to most of these places because they're either packed into a, a tight community um, or don't necessarily put in a part of the city that's not got the field and you know, all the amenities that we have here. So that is a big plus to the four-story option. Well, I'm just a woodshop guy, so. And I'm just going to mention that we, we need more than you've heard that. But, Saying it again might help. Who knows? Thank you. I, I, well, the point I really want to make is that uh, I moved here from Southern California seven years ago, and I was totally amazed at uh, at the way uh, seniors are treated in Broomfield. I'm sure glad I moved here, <laughs> and I'd like to to thank you for Senior trying to answer all the questions as well as you could, and uh, we appreciate it. Hopefully the plans will work out and get a bigger woodchuck. Everybody will get a bigger space. <laughs> Everybody will be happy. Thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thanks for your comments, comments and thanks, thanks for being here. <coughs> well, it looks like um, we've gone a little bit over our two hours of time with you guys. Um, and I wanted to, one more question? All right. One more question. This, this, this is a question. Will, will this presentation be available online? Uh, I believe I believe, believe the presentation is being videotaped, videotaped so uh, at some, some point, point it would be available online. And we also discussed the possibility of it online as well. So we might. Oh yeah. Might yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Is that the question? That's the question. All right. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much um, for your time. Kevin, did you want to say a few closing words? Oh yeah. So, we just finished the community meeting. Um, we're looking at December 14th, trying to wrap up these conceptual designs and present those to council at a study session so that they can help guide us and take us to the next step and whether we're gonna proceed with which one of these options. Um, I wanted to point out that you have, there's all these surveys out here and that's the way you cast your vote. So, um, if you guys, have additional comments or anything that you want to hear. We've been gathering all these things and it all gets compiled into data that we're using for the design process. The, the last designs that were posted were four and five. Correct. So, so four and five, we're now on six and seven, which are basically evolved designs from five and six. And Right. So, so Ben, can you say that they'll be available online tomorrow? Yeah, all of the images you're seeing tonight will be available tomorrow, and you can do an online survey as well, in addition to the paper copies. The paper copies can be dropped off here, or uh, that's the best place to provide the form right here. Right? Right?
Yeah.